Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Andrew Wolf, pastor of Congregational Care here at St. Paul's. And over the last few months, my team and I have been learning and creating new ways to support and care for our community as we are socially distanced. Through phone calls and emails, through prayers, through text messages, and even baking bread, the team has been able to reach out to the most vulnerable in our community in deeply meaningful ways, despite being unable to gather. I want to say a word of gratitude and thanks to everyone who is on our prayer team, who's on the lay visitation team, the health team, and those who have been a part of our care call team during COVID-19. Thank you for your service. Thank you uh, for caring in the midst of great uncertainty and fear. And thank you for opening your hearts as the world around us has begun to close down. I want to also say a simple word of thank you to everyone else in our congregation. For those of you who have reached out in your simple and organic ways to say a word of care and love to friends, for those who you share life together in our uh, Sunday school classes, maybe you share a pew together or you're in ministry together, uh, thank you for doing so. It is important now more than ever to care and connect to, to our loved ones in this community. Although we've had to adapt to a changing landscape, the Congregational Care Team and I are continuing to dream and create new ways of doing ministry with people of all ages and stages within our congregation and within the community. And so I'm excited to announce a few new developments that have been happening between the health and care teams. And the first announcement involves our collaboration with the University of Houston's Nursing School to create a telehealth clinic here at St. Paul's. Now more than ever, we have come to grips with the realities of healthcare inequality not only in our country, but also in our state where Texas ranks one of the highest for uninsured individuals. The telehealth collaborative seeks to directly address these issues. And we're excited to announce and have on board with us, Dr. David Buck. Dr. David Buck is the Associate Dean of Community Health at the University of Houston, and has been addressing healthcare inequalities in Houston amongst our marginalized communities since 1984. I am deeply grateful to have him on board with us, and I look forward to sharing more updates with all of you as our progress continues. Another bright spot that I am looking forward to this month is the beginning of a healing circle designed and curated specifically for our healthcare workers. I have so much gratitude for those who have been caring and treating the sick in our community in the midst of COVID-19. And I wanna say again, a word of thanks to all of you our researchers, our nurses, our technicians, our doctors, our administrators, and public health officials who have offered great wisdom and compassion and respect to care for the sick during COVID-19. As the husband of a NICU nurse, I have seen how COVID-19 has compounded the stress of our healthcare workers. Long hours away from family, multiple shifts that are back to back, and extra precautions that must be taken to keep your own family safe. There is so much that goes into the lives of healthcare workers. And I want you to know that St. Paul's is deeply committed and cares about the work you do and the ways in which you are spiritually connected to God. And so I hope that you'll be able to join us in one of our healing circles. We'll be starting June 11th at 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. And then we'll have a secondary on June 3rd or on Thursday, June 25th from 11 a.m until noon. If you want more information about how to sign up, I invite you to check out our website or to be in contact with either Helen Spa or myself. As we continue to care for the congregation in this season, we are acutely aware of the pain and the struggle and the grief of our black community. The murder of George Floyd highlights the haunting racism that still exists in our community and is felt by communities of color every day. And I know that for me, this is a time to listen, to engage in acts of solidarity, and to stand up and call out racism wherever it exists, be it in me or in the places around me. I know also that the church has a long and awful history with racism. Racism morally bankrupts the church. It has no place in God's shalom. It has no footing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as disciples of Christ, we are called to repent. 
We are called to address injustice and to seek out the care and the compassion for those who are grieving and mourning in our communities. Brothers and sisters in Christ, faith is not about a photo op. Faith is, is not about the rule of law, but about grace. Faith is not about forgetting. It is about forgiveness. We are reminded of these things in our scriptures, in the stories of the Apostle Paul, who lived out the law to the last jot and tittle, persecuting those who would disobey the law, and yet in the midst of his own zealousness, became blinded by God. And it was only through his conversion, only through understanding the deep love of God, that Paul came to understand the message of God was one of radical, unending grace. Grace for all people, insiders and outsiders, broken and bruised, black, white, and everyone in between. I'm reminded that ours is a faith of forgiveness and not forgetfulness. For when we share in the great thanksgiving, asking forgiveness for the things that we have done and for the things that we have left undone, we find in the Eucharist a meal that does not forget the wounds of our past, but allows us to repent and to learn how to love again in spite of all of that so that we might together create a more equitable, lasting change that ushers in God's good future. So let us commit again to our faith, a faith that is grounded in the love of God, the unending grace of God, a faith of forgiveness and not forgetfulness. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, in this moment we find ourselves celebrating the joy of Pentecost, as your Holy Spirit is sent down into our world. And yet at the same time, we find great grief and anger about the systemic racism and injustices in our country. We celebrate tongues of fire, and yet we are also confronted by cities on fire. Some of us sing, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, while for others, hope is a song in a weary throat. We pray for your spirit to breathe new life and to refresh our weary souls while others cry out, I can't breathe. Hold us, Holy One, in this moment. For we, your people, are grieving and mourning. We are lost and hurting. We are afraid and we are unaware. So open our hearts again to your love. Open our hands to those who are hurting. Open our eyes to injustice and works against your shalom. And open our ears for a moment for a moment that we might listen.
Lord, in your mercy. Amen.